بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, welcome all and thank you very much for uh, joining our uh, uh, today webinar i am saddam al-azani research scientist theory at uh, sadaya kf ubm joint research center for artificial intelligence and i will be moderating today's session uh, uh, today uh, we have uh, an interesting uh, topic entitled uh, artificial intelligence and digitalization in energy sector and uh, this webinar is or, uh, organized by sadaya kf ubm joint research center for artificial intelligence and fa facilitated by kex and our today's speaker is dr muhammad khalid dr muhammad khalid uh, received his phd degree in electrical engineering from the school of electrical engineering telecommunications at the University of New South Wales, uh, Sydney, Australia in 2011. Currently, he is serving as an associate professor in the electrical engineering department at King Fahd University of Petroleum and Minerals. Uh, he is also a fellow at Sadaya Kiev UBM Joint Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. Uh, Dr. Khalid, uh, uh, current research interests include the optimization and control of battery energy storage systems for large scale grid uh, connected renewable power plants, uh, distributed power generation and dispatch, hybrid energy storage, hydrogen systems, AVS, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and smart grids. Kindly be informed that you will be muted throughout the uh, webinar, and this session will be uh, uh, recorded uh, automatically by the admin. If you have any question, please type in, in the question box or raise uh, your hand and your questions will be answered at the end of this webinar. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Khaid, please go ahead. The floor is yours. You can share your screen. Okay, thank you very much. So let me share my screen. So okay, can you see my screen? Is is, is visible or no? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. So good afternoon, and I'm very excited to welcome all of you in my session, uh, which is entitled Artificial Intelligence and Digitalization in Energy Sector. So I am Associate Professor in Electrical Engineering and uh, affiliated with Sadaya and also Center for Renewable Energy and Power Systems. First of all, I would like to acknowledge and thank uh, Sadaya and Kicks for arranging the seminar. And, and today, so second, uh, the outline of my presentation is today, it has three parts. Uh, first part is very general introduction to energy transformation and transition. And secondly, we'll discuss the digitalization uh, and the trending technologies. And the third part will be artificial intelligence and uh, some applications and scope for uh, power and energy sector. So three parts. Uh, the objective. Uh, there is a there is some disclaimer here that my presentation, not technical, is non-technical presentation where we are trying to motivate or create a need for uh, AI and digitalization for power energy sector. So uh, I'll discuss the overall motivation of this uh, topic. You can see on the left hand side here we can see that we have a need which is uh, uh, in our case. Uh, the energy on the left-hand side, where we can see there are a lot of uh, like uh, uh, the inputs uh, for this uh, digitalization and artificial intelligence. Number one is uh, po population increase, sustainable energy, and lower di diversification, efficacy, flexibility, and also the net zero emissions. These are the uh, inputs which are basically triggering towards uh, the solutions. The first solution is digitalization, where we have big data, 
smart sensors and bi-directional communication and interoperability resiliency and the some ai is the tool for certain problems where it is self learning or non linear optimization uh, it is objective based solution robust and low database requirement so this is overall picture of our objective and the associated solutions for ai and uh, as i mentioned uh, very simple background is that uh, we the environmental problems these days every everybody is well aware of the environmental problems global warming and also this climate change so uh, this is very important uh, these days and uh, we can see from this slide that a couple of informations like uh, poverty and all over the world even what happens these days that many nation many people don't have even electricity in their houses so uh, this is second uh, the trigger point where uh, we have written couple of things which are triggering towards the transformation where we can say poverty human rights health pollution resources and all these things lead into climate change where uh, this is the biggest concern of this 21st century so we can say that the biggest global concern of the century is uh, the global warming and for this global warming there was an agreement uh, in paris known as very popular agreement which is paris agreement uh, it says that we need to reduce the temperature of this earth by one point uh, keep it below 1.5 degrees celsius and it has lot of uh, discussions and uh, many nations they have signed this agreement and there was a second version of this uh, agreement where they have added couple of other things where you can see here the global goals uh, in the right hand side picture that we the nation have signed the paris agreement for certain reasons where sustainability and as we discussed in the previous slides so this is one of the very important agreement uh, in uh, this new like era and uh, we can say the need energy the need it's very important that we, from long time ago we have started obviously we are using energy and it is coming from coal and natural gas oil and firewood these are the conventional energy sources now these uh, sources are getting depleted and uh, while the population is increasing and now the scope of meeting these energy demands through conventional resources limited due to their inefficient availability so we look looking for alternatives so you can see that this slide is very important where we can see from 1750 uh, we started with this coal and you can see the transition from 1750 to 1769 uh, then 1839 then you can see 1887 here we have wind wind power which is very long time ago we start and then 1935 and 1960 1980 here we can see in us and then 1991 2019 and 2050 so here 2050 and 2070 we're looking for net zero emissions so this is the future target so here this slide is very important where we can see that how this energy transition is happening and why this is happening and what is future so what what are the future uh, targets so uh, this basically triggers us towards these new kind of innovations and new uh, tools like AI. And this is something history uh, in a more uh, simplified way that 1859 petroleum, 1885, you can see this internal combustion in the 90s, oil, and 1950 electric and nuclear power plant. And now these days, today, coal, natural gas, and oil. What's next? We have, you can see here from this, we have traditional power system. There are three stages in power. The first stage is generation, second is transmission, and third is distribution. So in generation, uh, the, the, you can see that high carbon footprint. Why? Because the conventional power plant is based on conventional power source, which is based on fossil fuel. So they have high carbon footprints and CO2 emissions are very high. And the second thing, they are centralized. Centralized means that we produce at one point, then we transmit it and utilize at the other end. So in transmission, this is rigid. They have less flexibility, unidirectional energy flow, 
and the distribution again we have unidirectional low resilience or uh, we can say flexibility to intermittent power and low efficiency so these are the things which are happening uh, in power system now you can see here from this that if we are using the conventional for example uh, power generation so uh, this is the statistics of CO2 emissions that from electricity and heat production 25% industry 21% transportation 14% roughly and agriculture and you can see 24% and 6% from so this is a sort of picture of CO2 emissions now the important thing is the waste so we have power production uh, although this is not very uh, like conventional it's not very clean but we have wasted so we are wasting, we are producing, we have losses, and also we are wasting some energy. So we can say that here we have given some numbers that how the energy is getting wasted in terms of losses. So one is the simple uh, use of electricity, then electric, or oh, sorry, water vehicles, and nuclear, and coal fire, or we have some losses, the waste. Also, they very important that we need to minimize the waste. This is very important and also minimize losses such that we can improve the efficiency. And we're looking for some uh, tools and one of them is uh, digitalization and this AI, which we'll discuss later. Now here is another very important uh, diagram where we have energy conversion, efficiency and renewable energy. You can see energy pyramid is very, very important that uh, this figure, that how we are basically uh, looking for this uh, transformation that here, very important, the energy conversion where we should have high efficiency and we, we basically increase the efficiency but reduce the cost and also reduce pollution and degradation and global, uh, slow global warming and economic and national security. So these things are very important that while we are uh, taking this journey, but we have to take care of cost, pollution and a couple of other parameters while we enhance the efficiency. So you can see here, uh, very important that how uh, the, the uh, how we can basically reduce uh, the waste. So this is very important uh, that while we increase the efficiency by technological improvements in like the materials and transmission and distribution, on the other hand, we have to also minimize the, uh, reduce the energy waste. This also is a very important factor. Now here you can see here, this, uh, uh, this is a very simple, the statistics of conventional power versus renewable energy. This figure is a little old, but you can see in the left-hand side world, it says that 15% renewable, but at the moment, uh, today 20%, 20, 2021, at the end of 2021, this figure is not 15%, but this is 22 point something percent, which is uh, not very high. And even especially for the United States, these figures are a little higher than these figures. This figure is a little old. So the current figure, uh, for the world is more than 22%. So you can see that still we are taking approximately 78 or 80% from non-renewable resources, which are basically fossil fuel based, uh, basically the energy. And we are we, very little contribution of renewable energy. In the world. So the what happens that all over the world, the nations have set ambitious goals to do basically enhance or increase the penetration of renewable energy in their electricity grids. So uh, you can see here, there's another uh, important that uh, switching. While we move towards renewables that you can see that population is increasing and we can see that this density, population density in this, in this graph, that you can see that more people live in Great Tokyo, then all in Canada, you can see here Canada and to compare it, you will see that population density for different cities and we have mentioned a couple of uh, 10 cities here on the left hand side, you can see the population density. And this is another, this another trigger for uh, renewables and um, a sustainable basically energy resource. Another important factor is that uh, the, the fossil fuel, these, these general conventional uh, the sources they are depleting. So you can see this curve from here, from the left and right hand side curve. We can see that how how many years uh, these are getting depleted, and we need some alternate, and that basically another triggering towards the renewables. And we have a couple of things mentioned here that uh, 
while we are moving towards renewables, one, uh, one of the factors is long formation process of fossil fuels and a couple of information written here. And second is unequal distribution of fossil fuels. This is another um, reason of uh, switching towards renewables. And the third thing you can see the environmental impacts. This is very important that the power carbon emissions and uh, fossil fuel base, uh, they are basically uh, uh, emitting already the CO2 emissions in the environment. And this is very bad for our climate change, global warming. So this is very, very important that we look for uh, the clean energy resources, which is the renewables, just like solar and wind. So here, uh, now we move towards renewables and we say that they have some benefits. First benefit is clean, locally available, and cost compete. I can say cost competitiveness, but at the moment cost is very high, but the efforts are there to, to make the cost competitive with conventional power generations. And also less balance of systems, easy installation and less maintenance and energy mix. The energy mix is very important that we can include uh, more technologies that you can include for solar, wind, energy storage, and even uh, the hydrogen. So you can have energy mix, not only one type of uh, energy, but you have energy mix. So uh, to basically optimize the generation. So this is a very important point. And transition. So far, we discussed that what was energy and why we are moving towards the renewables and this transition. So this is a statement which is very, very important statement that energy transition refers to the global energy sector shift from fossil based systems of energy production and consumption, including oil, natural gas and coal to renewable energy sources like wind and solar, as well as lithium and like we're looking for also we're looking for batteries because uh, the renewable energy is incomplete without energy storage. So we have, uh, from this, we have found that there are three things, four things are very important uh, of 21st century in power system. Number one, decarbonization. Decarbonization means that you are trying to reduce the CO2 emissions and you are adding more clean energy resources into the system. Secondly, distributed or decentralized generation. So in contrary to centralized production, which is conventional power production, which we have distributed. Distributed means that your generation located at different points, like solar, wind, energy storage, and hydrogen in different, uh, different locations. And we make a small grid, uh, which is basically a micro grid. And uh, this is the second point, distributed uh, generations. And the third thing is digitalization. This is very, very important that when we have a lot of generations and we have a lot of sensors, measurements, and digital systems are there. So third thing is dig digitalization. And the third thing, fourth thing is very important with decreasing use. So not only to improve the efficiency and decrease the losses, but also we, we can decrease the use of energy by efficient, uh, efficient way. So this is very important transition. What changes the renewables is very, very important. We have discussed previously that renewables have, they have a lot of benefits, but they're on the other hand, they have a lot of problems. Number one, they are like uncertain in nature. And also they are unpredictable. They are non-dispatchable and so on. And if you increase the penetration of these renewables into the grid with such kind of uh, properties, it can unstabilize your grid and it create a lot of problems. So uh, we are saying that renewables are very important, but they have problems and challenges. So when there are challenges, we have opportunities and the researchers are working on uh, these problems to mitigate these problems which are associated with renewable energy. And we have discussed previously, and some of the problems are uh, mentioned here, like they have very complicated stochastic nature and also the uh, demand and power mismatch frequency regulations and for voltage fluctuations, a lot of problems are there. And these problems, one of the solution is uh, digitalization that we go for digitalization and where we can handle measurements and communication easy. And also we can use some modern or latest algorithms uh, to basically handle these uh, or to mitigate the problems associated with renewable energy uh, integration. And you can see here, 
The another solution, uh, other than digitalization, that we look more backups. For example, renewable energy, they, they are coupled with energy storage. But there is one point here that energy storage is also very expensive. And what happens that we need to make the competitive, the cost competitive combination of renewables and energy storage. So we can say that energy storage is a potential solution, but it has a problem. First is cost and uh, the fast charge and discharge things, a lot of things associated with energy storage as well. So what happened now? We're looking for the solution of them. So storage is the solution, but to use it optimally, we need another solution. And the, the potential solution for this is also digitalization. And there's a very important aspect that here energy storage, when energy storage cannot deal with a certain situation, high ramp rates, then we have to mix it. So not only generation mix, but we have storage mix. This is a very important point where we can mix like batteries and supercapacitors. So to basically benefit from complementary practices of different technologies. So uh, we have, we have generation mix, and also we have uh, the, the storage mix, and both have the challenges, and we are looking for the solution of the challenges. And in this case, what happens that in, in conventional generation, as we discussed before, that this is unidirectional. And if this unidirectional, the control is very little, we cannot have too much control. So uh, in tran transitions, we are looking for bi-directional power flow. For example, very simple example that, a customer, a user cannot sell their power to the grid. I mean, it is only one way communication. So the, now if there's a bi-directional power flow, it means that a user can interact with, with the grid. So this will be a concept of future smart grids where the user can inter interact with, with, the, with, the, with, with your general utility. And this is bi-directional. Similarly, we have ACDC interface, we have DC and inter because your battery is DC and your use is AC. So we need some interface, which is inverters and converters. All the, this is very, also very important technology where uh, we need to improve the, the converter side. And these days we're looking for smart inverters, uh, which also being a digitalization concept that we are solving some problem in power electronics or power conversion uh, using this uh, digital uh, techniques. Now here, this is a very comprehensive slide, which is summarizing everything. You can see here um, that on the left-hand side, we have one entity where we have like uh, loads. Loads can be commercial, can be residential, industrial, and the generation can be there. You can see generation. Then the loads, this is one entity, but on the right hand side, you will see that one entity has another similar entity. And this is sort of a network uh, of entities. You can see, so you can see the system complexity is increasing. So you can see that how one entity has expanded to a bigger with a similar uh, like loads and generation. So this has become a very important uh, problem, which is very complex and very complicated the size of the system has become bigger and the size of the data has become bigger and the control is complicated and challenges. Interaction is very important. It's also very like the challenges and also security and all other problems we'll discuss later. But from this slide, we can, we can see that the transition of energy from very simple to a very complicated structure with certain benefits, it needs some solutions. And the solution is uh, the, the we're looking for the solution through this digitalization and this new AI uh, techniques. So uh, this is very simple that what type of renewable we consider these days or very popular solar, wind, bioenergy, geothermal, ocean, tidal, uh, hydro, hydroenergy, hydrogen, and fuel cell. These are the popular technology that we use. Uh, they are basically in, uh, in uh, play a very good role in energy transition. So here, now this is very important. As I mentioned before, that we'll discuss the power system. So here we can see that on the left-hand side, we have one uh, power plant. In the middle, we have transition, and here on the right, we have distribution. So how we say that we need digitalization, how? So now next slide, you will see that this is my, you see the difference here. 
so simple structure, one way communication, and we are moving toward this micro grid where we have a couple of generations. And then you can see that things are distributed. But here there is something lacking. There are four things lacking, which will add here in the micro grid, it becomes this smart grid. You can see here from this slide to this slide, and there's another this slide. So let me explain this. So one way communication, which is very, very traditional power system, it is emerging as a transition to microgrid where we have a couple of generations and connection small microgrid. And obviously it is also a system. And then from here, we add four functionalities. Number one, we add number of sensors uh, higher, like more number of sensors here. Second thing, we add communication between these entities. And the third thing that we have automation, which is control. Three, three things, sensors, this measurement, control and automation. Three things we add it and it becomes the smart grid. So obviously this smart grid, it is based on digital technologies and we have a lot of sensors which, are, which give you data in digital form or another form. And then we have uh, communication, a lot of standards are there for communication. And we have control algorithms, uh, which are obviously digital. And then finally we have automation. So this smart grid is basically a combination of four important things which are obviously digital. Uh, and then we need some algorithms to basically solve uh, the problems with this, this kind of data. So here, you can see here that this is the flow of data, which is uh, without any information, only power flow. But the next slide, you will see that here, we have not only power flow, you can see from this to this, two slides. We have information flow. So here, this unidirectional power, no information. Bidirectional power, we have bi and also we have electricity plus information flow, which is obviously communication involves there. And this is second structure. And the third is very important here, the right hand side that you can see from the, the comparison, this is a motivation for this digitalization that left hand side, we have very simple structure and the right hand side, we have so complicated uh, structure which involves like lot of measurements and uh, expansion and communication and control and automation and system size is too big. So you can see, you can imagine the, the, the size of the data we basically, uh, we, we uh, gather. And, and here we can see here now, we have obviously, we have a residential customer, we have commercial customer, we have industry. So every entity has its own requirements, own regulations and things like this. So for all these complicated structures and uh, complicated basically system and emerging big system, we need like uh, the innovative solutions and uh, the uh, one of the solutions these days which people proposing is AI and digitalization, which is the topic of our today's seminar. Now you can see here, from here, all this communication, now this is AI. So we see so many, so much data and information flow here. Now, so now we are in the second stage of our presentation, which is first was the motivation towards digitalization. And the second part of our presentation is digitalization. So after discussing these all uh, important things, we discussed that, we have mentioned that digitalization is a key enabler. So this is the lesson from all previous discussion. And the second thing is that AI is the key enforcer. So we have found that all these uh, system, complicated or complex system, bigger system, we need like two important things. One of them is digitalization and second is AI. So, and obviously other things are associated with these two important entities, but these are the major two ones. So you can see here, from here. So now we start with, we start in the first part of the presentation, the decarbonization, renewable energy sources, nuclear, alternative. Second thing is sustainable development. And third thing is very important. You can see here that we're moving from one state to the other state. And here in the middle, we have digitalization, where we have digital twins and RFID, IoT, blockchain, virtualized power plant. Here we have virtual power plants even, very important. That this is another very important concept of virtual power plants. And obviously this will extend, the digitalization is extending towards this higher level of so uh, this, we can see from here, the need of digitalization. 
Now here, we have mentioned that here, the while we go for digitalization. So we have this couple of percentages here that uh, we are looking for speed, which is, you can see here, to reduce the cost and improve the ability to innovate. So you can see here, this is roughly, we can say that these are some benefits of digitalization in energy sector. So this basically is a motivation for uh, toward digitalization. Now, in digitalization, we have like a couple of technology which are very much emerging or they are trending technologies. So uh, we, are, we are mentioning here cup, the only four of them, which one of them is Internet of Things, IoT, and second is artificial intelligence, for third is uh, data analytics and fourth is blockchain. These are the important uh, trending technologies these days, which play a very good, very important role in uh, energy sector. So here, what is blockchain, where it can contribute? We can say that uh, we have mentioned here a couple of important information that the digital transformation, blockchain, AI plays a very important role, not only in energy sector, but also it is in the oil and gas sector. And you can see that uh, the, the how many applications or areas where this blockchain AI uh, can help. And here, now we have IoT. It has also, just like blockchain, we have, this, we have discussed IoT. IoT, it can uh, help in microgrid integration. This is very important, which is very related to energy. As I mentioned before, microgrids where we have solar, wind, and energy storage, all kind of uh, generations. And also, it can, from here, it can go digitalization, uh, digitalize power generation, then data storage, and advanced military infrastructure. This is very important because uh, we are moving towards smart grids. And smart grids has a big, like, big entity, which is AMI, which is uh, advanced metering infrastructure. So this basically smart meters, basically data. And data collection analytics and IoT uh, protocols. You can see that IoT helps in these uh, domains. And finally, AI, artificial intelligence. You can see from here that uh, AI can serve not only in energy sector or power sector, but it can help in many, many disciplines which are uh, listed here. Now, especially in some technical words that in our power sector, uh, we use AI and some algorithms, some tools. One of them is uh, artificial neural networks where we need like it is this is a network which replicates human nervous system. It, it is basically very good for predictions or forecasting. And basically AN is used extensively in power sector for like uh, generation forecasting and load forecasting and uh, price forecasting and also uh, demand forecasting and also weather patterns, especially for wind. And this is very accurate, uh, the, 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 the network and the artificial network. Similarly, region, this is another uh, convolution-based uh, neural networks, which is basically, uh, it is preventive maintenance, and also this is solar farm maintenance scheduling, and also now it use hydropower plants. So these uh, system neural networks and these subsets, artificial neural network is basically, uh, it has a lot of branches and a lot of subsets. So uh, all of them, they are used in, marketing, market pricing here, especially in power domain, uh, and also uh, in prediction of the generation and on the demand side, the demand forecasting and cost, especially. And fuzzy networks. Fuzzy also is a form of uh, the, uh, the AI, basically the intelligent network, which is also very important in renewable forecasting and uh, in power system is extensively utilized. So here, now, uh, we can say that how AI can help us. So we can say that grid integration. So obviously, uh, the, the all over the world, the, the nations have set ambitious goal, ambitious goals to, to, to basically increase the penetration of renewable energy. So grid integration is the challenge of the day to day. So AI can help us in grid integration, uh, especially uh, by, by doing accurate forecasting. So maintain and maintain and the design, three things, integration, maintenance, maintenance, maintain, and third thing, design, 
So the AI can help us in all basically domains of this uh, power uh, sector. Here, big data. So you can see from here that the data practice when we collect so much data. So now we have to handle and manage this data. So uh, the, the big data characteristics and associated uh, the, the parameters, so they are very much like uh, explored these days and they are helping in power sector. And here we can see that how many things are there uh, for big data. So the, you can see from so much information is coming from the networks and uh, this is big uh, data like database. So in this case, uh, to handle, for example, this data, we need some algorithms because we have a lot of challenges. Uh, when we have a lot of data and challenges are there, uh, it's not so simple. We have security, data security, privacy, cyber security. A lot of things are there. So you can see so many systems are uh, connected here. And here, blockchain, which is another te trendy technology. And from here, you can see the, some benefits that a low transaction cost, uh, reduced cost of utility bills, access to portable energy, cost reduction due to both information is more and new opportunities for communication among energy devices. So we have a lot of devices now uh, in the, the transformed energy sector, not the conventional one, but in the transformer, we have a lot of devices. They are communicating each other and uh, the, the, the blockchain basically can help us uh, in this area. And here also we have mentioned that it's not only energy sector, but it is also, uh, it can help us in uh, oil and gas uh, area, which is also uh, energy sector, we can say that, but it helps us in many other uh, fields, a lot of benefits. Here we have given uh, some uh, sort of mapping uh, for blockchain where uh, this blockchain can help us for the left hand side, we can see that uh, the, the countrywide charging and payments and distribution system management and asset and community management. You can see here on the left hand side and the right hand side, we have three uh, trading and the market and optimization. So, so you can see that so many systems there and blockchain is helping us in uh, addressing those things. And here, this slide is also very comprehensive uh, in in uh, terms of explaining the benefits of uh, this uh, blockchain. So uh, the lesson is very important that when we have a lot of data uh, and uh, you need the, the algorithm and tools and blockchain is one of them, it has a lot of like uh, applications here uh, which can be handled uh, by blockchain. So uh, the lesson, the, the important lesson for us is that uh, we need to adapt these technologies to improve the uh, system uh, in many aspects. So especially at the end, you can see the renewable energy and wind power, so wind power. So digital twins can, can help us in uh, the, 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 the wind power systems. So in distribution. So basically, this is very, very important uh, to basically incorporate these kind of new trending technologies in the conventional uh, wind power systems. And here, uh, obviously, these days everybody knows about this revolution and this industry revolution 4.0. So we have to go, we have to move. There is no choice. Power sector, energy sector, they have to move towards these uh, new initiatives and energy industry revolution 4 is a very important uh, strand. So this uh, nowadays very important uh, all over the world. And then uh, here we can say that uh, what's the purpose? It's very important diagram where you can see that it's very comprehensive uh, discussing uh, the need. So here we also mentioned a couple of uh, important parameters like cyber security and uh, IoT. So uh, we have to move towards this uh, for IR 4.0, which has a lot of like uh, very important uh, information. And it is further explained. You can see from here, this is the sort of bigger picture of uh, IR 4.0, but here more like in terms of uh, further classifications of. So you can see here, uh, if we talk about like power sector, so you can see here that we can, we need this 
this information in power sector. For example, we need network optimization. We need like market optimization. What is market? Market where we trade and electricity. In Saudi Arabia at the moment, the we have fixed tariff and market is not that very big. Uh, but in other countries where the markets are very big, energy trading is there. But we are moving in that direction, and we need like uh, network optimization, market optimization. We need like enabling flexible and diversified power sources, effective expansion of transmission distribution networks. Obviously, we are moving towards new technologies, but we need to update the infrastructure. So it's very important. Identification and inclusion of additional and silo services, then security and contribution from consumers upgraded. So this is very, very important that consumer becomes a pros, prosumers. What does it mean that a consumer also produces, you, he, he basically utilizes the power and also produces the power. So consumer becomes prosumer. So it's very important. Coordinated and flexible and compatible and fast and data communication audit. So you can see that these are a couple of, uh, basically this is a very complicated network of systems where uh, we need to basically optimize uh, or uh, improve our system. Now, uh, in, in our center, uh, Sadaya, uh, the today or uh, our focus, uh, this is very important, as I mentioned in the previous slide, that our needs and our requirements and future projections. Uh, so based on this, in our central Sadaya, we are targeting as uh, at the moment uh, on these uh, the, the topics where renewable energy and load forecasting, and then secondly, stability of grid, targeting higher renewable and integration, and power system flexibility and resilience, power system planning and operation, contingencies and standardization. So these are the major, uh, especially in power sector, not, not only you know, other things are there, but especially in power side, we are targeting at these uh, four or five major fields. And on the right hand side, the subsets, where we are looking for heuristic optimization, smart sensors, energy storage and optimization and control, renewable, renewable power smoothing, distributed optimization, smart meters, blockchain formation, capacity optimization, neural networks, net metering schemes, optimal sizing and allocations of renewable energy sources, cost minimization, and model predictive control, smart inverters, power electronics, advanced control theory. Now, these are some topics uh, which are we, are we are targeting, but Obviously, we have more than this, which are not listed here, uh, which especially for, for example, cyber security and uh, in power sector and privacy and the all the things which are related to smart grids. But at the moment, we are targeting at these uh, couple of things. Uh, and as we proceed, it's not only that things are very easy, but we have challenges. So what are the challenges in this domain? Uh, domain means digitalization and AI uh, together, what are the challenges? So you can see that the policy and legislative initiatives on blockchains are moving their first steps, starting from the financial sector and gradually covering other sectors, including the energy, energy sector. So numerous regulatory, legal, and socioeconomic hurdles still hamper the large de deployment of digitalization and AI applications. These are basically uh, bigger, bigger, uh, I can say challenges, not technical, but non-technical challenges. Besides addressing the over-searching issues associated with these technologies, security, scalability, and interoperability is also a challenge. Policy decision making will need to tackle more energy-related specific problems in the privacy and identity, liability and markets, data access, fairness, and acceptance spheres. So you can see on the right hand side, we have mentioned a couple of areas where we have some, we face some challenges or issues. Now, in conclusion, uh, we, we, we can say that climate change and environmental preservation while maintaining appropriate humankind lifestyle is the greatest challenge. Decarbonization, distributed or decentralized generation, digitalization and decreasing use, which is 
energy efficiency must be considered uh, and they are vital toward sustainable development. And the global, national, and local energy transition requires big data management and dedicated robust optimization. And digitalization facilitates big data management, fast communication, security, and effective market regulation. And AI enables optimization and control over the costs and operations necessary to effectively realize sustainable and regulated energy market. Nevertheless, the progress is stemmed due to both social and technological reasons that are a factor of lack of investments and researchers as their field requires multidisciplinary knowledge and are extensive collaborations. Innovative, technical, socio-economic solutions are required to contribute towards global and local efforts against climate change issues and towards Vision 2030 of Saudi Arabia. And finally, acknowledgement. I would like to acknowledge Sadaya for arranging this webinar, also uh, for uh, their, their efforts in AI, uh, digitalization, and also uh, contributions in the energy sector. Obviously, energy sector is not alone. Energy sector is basically is a coupling between many other uh, sectors. So AI energy is uh, they are coupled, and uh, it's very important that we we basically improve our energy systems and couple uh, couple with these digital technologies. And also, I would like to acknowledge uh, the KFU Kim Institute of Knowledge of Saint Kicks. Uh, for facilitating this webinar today. And with this, I would like to thank you all participants. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can freely ask. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Th thank you, Dr. Mohammed Khalid, for your informative uh, presentation. Now I will open the floor for a uh, question, please, for those who uh, have uh, any question raise your hand or type in your question in the uh, question box. Any question? Uh, I have a question, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, Please. Okay, my question, uh, uh, based on your uh, experience in the energy sector, is there any collaboration or utilize to, to utilize social the information from social media to for the energy optimization or something like this? Uh, for for us for Saudi Arabia or in general? In general. From social media. Yes. Is it a good resource for uh, energy optimization or? In my knowledge, I, I don't remember uh, the, we use some information on social media for energy optimization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, social media, like obviously the, the, if you have like social media, you can exchange the information, but uh, in terms of actual uh, optimization parameter, I think no, but obviously for information communication, uh, social media, as we mentioned in our slides, that uh, it is uh, it is there for digitalization, uh, social media, but this can be for communication or uh, fast. So it is very important like uh, uh, in future, this is important element, but at this stage, I think though there's no technical information to use for optimization at this stage. Okay, here uh, there is a right hand from Dr. Mohammed Azam. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Azam, uh, Mohammed Azam. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Khalid, uh, for the great presentation. 
it's really an eye opener for us uh, to find different uh, directions for our research. So one of the things that you mentioned is that uh, uh, there is a huge demand uh, uh, for research in energy efficiency. So my question is that uh, uh, because we have very strong foundation in uh, energy efficiency, so is there any any opportunity for us to uh, work uh, at uh, at our center with you um, uh, in smart buildings, energy efficiency in smart buildings? Because if we look at the smart buildings, uh, they have in commercial buildings in commercial buildings to make them smarter through AI in commercial buildings. Uh, around 70% of the energy is being used by HVAC systems. And if we can optimize the operation of HVAC systems and we can, uh, uh, we can uh, decrease the carbon footprints and uh, improve uh, certain operations. And there is a lot of uh, need for uh, in, in that, that area. So uh, is there any opportunity for us to, to work together here uh, at the center? Yes, yes. So thank you very much, Azam. So uh, where, where, like, you are, in which, like, department are you working? Uh, I am in a, uh, in a joint research center for AI. Ah, good. So definitely, we always have these uh, collaboration opportunities. But before, uh, before I go there, uh, in this talk, I was limited myself towards only energy. But as you mentioned uh, yourself that uh, we have not only energy, uh, we have like energy efficiency can be in transport area and buildings, which is very, very important. So our, our next stage, even my next uh, seminar, maybe we are writing something for uh, with architecture and engineering department. We are looking for uh, the efficiency improvement uh, uh, of energy uh, building. So uh, definitely uh, the, there is a, our next step is the base energy buildings, the energy efficiency in buildings. So you can always collaborate and it will be a pleasure to collaborate with you and you can always contact me and we can start working on this because our goal is net zero emissions. And we start with the building. So even with us, we have a project where a grand challenge project in our electrical, which we have submitted a request and it is on like it is, we are working on a project known as net zero building. So uh, we are also targeting not only reducing the emissions, but also the increasing the efficiency. So uh, this is very right time if you can uh, contact later on. So you can see in which area you can contribute and I'm happy to uh, basically uh, to, to collaborate with you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, can I ask another question? Yes, yes, please. Like, uh, if you have worked in energy efficiency, so which kind of uh, uh, techniques from AI you have used in energy efficiency? Yes, for at the, the moment, uh, myself, especially myself, because uh, uh, I am control engineer. I am control engineer, but my application power system. So last couple of like two years ago, we started working on, we thought that uh, we, we, if we work on traditional power system, this is not enough. So we started moving towards like uh, using this AI. So my couple of papers, which are not related to energy efficiency, but they are related to power quality using AI. So we have used neural networks, we have used machine learning. You can see my paper published in my profile last uh, using hydrogen system. So the uh, next stage is that we'll move, we'll use this AI for energy efficiency. But so far, my target is power quality than energy efficiency. So next, uh, so far, I didn't use AI for energy efficiency, but for power quality. Basically, machine learning. And you can see the latest published paper is uh, also latest patent published uh, two to three months ago, which is power quality enhancement using AI. So we'll use uh, the same AI for energy efficiency in the future, uh, definitely. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.
here is a question from Dr. Irfan Ahmed. And he, uh, uh, Presti, thanks you for your nice presentation. I've just seen the chat message where I replied that uh, definitely this is one of the challenges uh, in case of smart grids, uh, which is basically based on digital technologies. And uh, the privacy and security is considered as the biggest challenge in smart grids. So this is a challenge, definitely you're right. And obviously uh, uh, the, we're looking for solutions and there are many solutions that exist uh, uh, these days and it, it is getting improved. There is no more question. At uh, the end, I would like to thank uh, all of you for attending our today uh, webinar uh, presented by Dr. Mohammed Khalid and organized by Sadaiq of UBM Joint Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. And, and uh, thank you, Dr. Mohammed Khalid, for accepting our uh, invitation and looking forward to seeing you all in our upcoming events.